What's up, everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news, and today's guest is coming off a split decision victory over Tisha Torres at UFC 273. I am pleased today to be joined by Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie, it's always great talking with you. Thanks again for being here. Really appreciate the time, and congrats on the win. Yeah, thank you. It's always great talking to you, and um, I'm definitely happy I got a win, so I'm excited. I'm excited. So yeah, hard-fought victory for you. You've had a few days now to let it all sink in. Just how good does it feel to be here right now, a few days removed from what was a great victory for you? Yeah, it's like, you know, I wasn't having any, I was trying not to have too much pressure and stuff like that, but it's like Tisha's kind of that, that girl, that fighter, that, I mean, she's only lost to, like, former champions or people who became the champion later, you know? Um, and so it's like, and all of them have been, like, close fights, like decisions, you know, with Zhang Wei Li, with Rose, with Joanna, you know, with all these girls. So, like, I've tried not to keep any, put any pressure on me, but deep inside, I was like, man, I hope I'm part of those girls, you know, the ones that get the win over her. I knew it was going to be a tough fight. Um, I knew she was coming, um, you know, just each time she's been involving so much, so much, at least from her beginning in the UFC all the way till now, I feel like she's just evolved so much and she's getting so much um, mature as a fighter. And so I knew it was going to be a tough fight, um, but I was like, man, it's going to be really important on a personal level if I can get the win over Tisha. You know, I know I have so much, I still have so much to, to get better at. I don't feel like my performance was the cleanest or the most um, strategic, you know, but I think with someone like Tisha, you kind of just got to forget about the strategy and technique and just go forward you know <laughs> so that was the game plan and i'm happy two of the judges saw it in my favor you know um and yeah it was good i'm glad to have the win so now before we get into the breakdown of this win and get into the x's and o's of everything i do want to back up for just a second and that's to the ufc 273 press conference where you and Tisha kind of had a little back and forth there. I think it threw a lot of the fans off. It threw me off, at least. I wasn't expecting that to uh, happen between you guys. Just uh, talk about that moment at the press conference and kind of what happened that led to that back and forth. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, me, it's funny because me and Tisha, like, we're, we've been cool with each other for since I've met her, you know, and I still, like, so much respect for her and, and feel good. But I felt, like, a little bit at the... At the press conference, you know, she was just kind of like talking a little bit, and I didn't see her. I didn't feel her like disrespectful, but I felt like she was kind of like just looking past me a little bit, you know, like oh that my jujitsu wasn't that good, you know, like I wasn't gonna be able to catch her, you know, uh, like get to her. Um, just I don't know. I felt like she wasn't really considering me that much, you know. And I mean, you're in front of like all these people, and I felt kind of like man, I need to stand up for myself a little bit, you know. So. Um, I kind of wanted to just say a little thing. Well, okay, well, what about if we go to the ground? You know, where that's my specialty. You know, like okay, she, I know she's fast. She has good footwork. Um, she has a lot high volume. But what about when you're in my world? You know, how how are you gonna feel? You know, then she, oh well, I'll stand back up. I'm like, okay, but what about when I have like my arms around your neck? Like it's the friendliest trash talk. It wasn't the most aggressive trash talk, but you know, I felt like I needed to say a little bit just to kind of. Hey, I'm here, you know, don't, I'm still here, you know, I still, I see what you're saying, I know you're confident, but don't, don't think I'm, it's going to be an easy fight, you know, so I felt like I had to do that, and her too, I think she wanted to, um, you know, solidify her confidence, and that she's prepared, no matter what. And of course, after the press conference, you were able to go on and get the win a few days later. Now let's start breaking that win down. We'll start with the opening round. Of course, that was the round that ended up deciding this fight. Two judges scored the fight in favor of you, while one scored that round uh, and gave that fight then to Tisha. Uh, just talk about that opening round, kind of how it played out in your eyes. And uh, I guess two-parter here, Jason Perillo, of course, your coach, he's always animated there in the in the corner i know after the end of the first round he was very amped up and animated there just talk about what his messaging was at the end of the first round as well um like it's funny you know because in my opinion you know i'm like i'm the fighter you know so for me in my opinion i feel i won all three rounds you know what i mean i think i like when i think about fighting i think that my punches were heavier you know i felt like i was pushing the pushing forward the whole time um and i'm starting like from the first round like 
I, I wobbled her and went with one of my punches, you know, um, like kind of near the end of the round. So, I mean, I just felt her just trying to run away, you know, like would just kind of slip. She would kind of get like some a couple counter things, but I felt like her punches just didn't do anything, you know, no, no, not really impactful, nothing, you know. So for me, I feel like, man, I feel like I was pressuring the whole time. And that was kind of just what I asked him and I said, okay, did I win this one? He's like, man, in my opinion, you won, you won the round, you know, mm. but the judges, I mean, and it's not that there's right or wrong. The, if you fight like a point fighter, that's part of the game too, you know? So it's not that there's a right or wrong, but for me and my coaches, we really think that like, I won the fight. You know what I mean? If you think like, okay, the, a strategy or point or something like that, I can understand maybe why the judges would give to her, you know? But I think if you think about, hey, a fight and, you know, everything in context, the more impactful punch is who's pressuring, who's going, who's attacking the whole time. Uh, any stuff, anything that she was throwing at me, kicks or things like that, was everything kind of on her back leg, you know, because I was just pressuring forward and just, you know, and I think she kind of took a little bit to start throwing punches, you know, took like maybe to start throwing a little bit high, more high volume, like maybe the last two minutes of each round, you know, so um, not the second round, you know, but the, the first and the third, you know. So in my opinion, I think I won all three rounds, you know, even though um, a lot of people thought like, oh, the third round, I feel like, man, even the last round, she tried to take me down, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds left. And I like counted her takedown and I was landing and I landed on top, you know, so it's like. I feel like I, I was pressing even from the beginning of the third round. She started to do a couple, like, kicks, but more just to keep the distance, not really to hurt me. Not It wasn't an aggressive kick. It was just kind of to keep the distance. So, in my opinion, I thought I, I you know, I won. But I understand both sides. I don't see a right or wrong. Um, when you go to the judge's decision, that's, you know, that always can be, uh, you know, uh, uh like a opinion, you know, maybe they can see it one way, they can see a different way, they're boxers, or they're, like even the statistics, you know, it's like ground control time, they give her like half, two minutes and a half, and me two minutes and a half, you know, but in my mind, it's like, man, even when I was on the bottom, I'm like controlling her legs and her arms, and I'm like, I'm in control, you know, so you you see things like, okay, if you see like ana analyzing statistics, I guess like ground control just because she was on top, but Who's, who knows what a fight, you know, a grappler, a grappler mindset, man, I was in control the whole time, even on the ground, you know, so I was like, mm -hmm. she had ground control, like, man, I, you know what I mean, so it's like little things like that, that I see that the sport of martial arts, and then the difference between sport martial arts and actual fighting, you know, martial arts, you know. Yeah, judging is always difficult to try to figure out, like, what exactly a judge is looking for and the way how they score certain things. And, like, for me personally, one that bothers me with judging is uh, whenever there's a takedown that lasts literally half a second. Like, you blink your eye and you can miss the whole entire thing. The guy's literally back up like that. And that's what ends up being the deciding factor in a round was this blink of an eye takedown. That one's that, – that bothers me quite a bit, but uh, – uh, I know there's a lot of moving parts with judging and what they look for, and there's a whole... I, I know the judging thing can be a very complicated thing, but to the judges, come, come to the defense a little bit. It is a thankless job. Obviously, the you know a lot of fans are always on them. Fighters are always on their cases. Uh, I, I know a lot a lot going on with, with all the judges there, so it's a, it's a very difficult job. But anyway, back to breaking this fight down here. Um, you kind of summarized rounds one and three there for us and kind of the way how you thought of things there. But I do want to ask you about the second round. That was obviously your best round of the fight. It was an exciting round to watch, too, let me tell you. I mean, I was at the edge of my seat like, oh, my God, what's going on here? There were so many crazy scrambles and different submission techniques, and it was just such a fun round to watch if you're a fan of the sport. Break that round down for us and kind of explain everything that uh, took place in that second round. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely thought that the Kimura was tight. You know, it was really tight. But, I mean, she was she was – resisting good you know um the leg lock i was good but i think i could have maybe tried a little bit more on the leg lock you know i kind of switched to the toe hold kind of fast you know i kind of oh, okay i'm gonna you know i was kind of transitioning instead of maybe i could have stopped tried a little bit more because i think maybe going back and watching the fight and seeing the leg lock okay the leg lock was was close you know i should have insisted a little bit more on the leg lock and the kimura too you know i think that the kimura um was tight but 
I was staying like kind of technical, you know, like trying to bring her leg, her arm back, past her back, you know. I think I was kind of more expecting that she was gonna tap. Um, and yes, yeah, I mean, she didn't, you know. So going back and thinking like, man, I think it was missing like that little bit, kind of that meanness, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, I could just yank it, you know, and maybe she would tear her, her shoulder, tear her ligaments, you know, and be out for, you know, a long time, have to do surgery. Um, or I was kind of in my technique way that I was, like trying to, to push it back, you know, force it back. And ex I thought that she was going to tap, you know. So I think if I would have been like maybe meaner, had that more aggression in me, like, okay, just just yanked it, you know. And you know what I mean? Like sometimes we, you need to have that, you know what I mean? And even though you don't want to hurt the person, you know, I don't want to see her out for tons of months or anything like that. But going back, it's like, man, it's part of the fight, you know, it, like, okay will she do that to me probably you know she'll do it to me so it's like i see little moments like that where i'm still maturing as a fighter and just making the right decisions and you know still having that aggress that meanness you know that i think we have to have to really win the fight she's never been submitted before finished before so i really wanted to be her first like finish finish her first um so i feel like i kind of missed out on that opportunity because of that and then later you know, it was like, oh, I saw she said like, oh, she went like toe to toe with a black belt, Brazilian black belt and stuff like that, you know. But I mean, in my mind, she was like just just defending and like, hold, you know, what I mean? hold on. I wasn't like really like toe to toe, you know, what I mean? so something like that. So, I mean, I'm excited. I don't think that there are too many girls with my actually, I don't think there's any girls with my jiu jitsu in the UFC, you know, so I think. It's really cool to kind of hear the crowd and people like um, appreci appreciating things like jumping guard and jumping kimuras and kind of the, the way I'm flowing on the ground going from knee bar to toe hold and these things. And I'm like, okay, you know, people were booing a little bit, but I think, you know, overall they were appreciating kind of this different style and seeing like, hey, jiu-jitsu is a martial art too. You know, I know they like the blood and the cuts and stuff like that, the knockouts, but it's cool to see people really showing that appreciation for my style and how it can be effective too. Well, Mackenzie, let me tell you, I was out at a bar for this fight watching it. Uh, I was watching the whole main card at a bar and when your fight was on, nobody was booing, especially in that second round there, okay? I can tell you, everybody was all animated and excited and at the edge of their seats, like, oh my God, what's going on here? It was really a great, great round uh, for you to watch. It was a fun round to watch for the fans. It was a, a great, hard-fought uh, fight by both of you guys. And now I do want to talk about uh, what was going through your mind at the end here. So obviously, fight completes. We know it's a hard-fought fight, like we said several times. Uh, Bruce Buffer starts announcing the judges scorecards and he immediately goes into split decision mode. So when he's announcing that's going to be a split decision, what's going through your mind? Like, is your heart racing? Are you nervous or were you pretty confident that you had gotten the job done that night? Um, I mean, when the fight was over, I knew, it, I knew it was going to be a close, close call. You know what I mean? Because I mean, that's, that all her fights are close call, you know, that's kind of her style. So, um, I don't know, just coming from the jiu-jitsu background, all my jiu-jitsu tournaments, my goal is never to let it in the judge's decision. You know, I've never been mad at judges' decisions, really, even though if maybe I won't agree to it, if I didn't agree to it. But it's, 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 it's like, um, you know, it's, uh, each person is different. Their vision of the fight, you know, what, what they think is controlling. Also, for me, I was kind of like, I was prepared for it to go either way. You know what I mean? I wasn't like upset. I wasn't overexcited. I was just hoping, like hoping that they see my, you know, how much I wanted the fight and how much I wanted the win, you know, and how much I pushed for that, you know? So I was hoping that in the end, um, just who wanted it more was going to come out because I think that Tisha was having, like showing a lot of cool techniques. Uh, she was greeting out a lot of the, a lot of the, t the submissions, um, you know, like the third round, I took her down and then she like pushed me off with her feet, you know what I mean? With her, with her leg, you know, people like, oh man, in my opinion, that's like the minimum, you know, she's just defending herself, you know, she's not, she wasn't like up kicking me or anything like that. She just pushed my chest, you know? So, I mean, people look at that and maybe it could call attention. So I was prepared. Okay. Uh, what the judge is going to say, I, I, I did my best, but we went to the judge's decision. So I need to be prepared, whatever they say. 
And then, of course, after that, you know, a little bit of chaos there inside the octagon of Bruce Buffer announcing the decision there. Uh, There's a great family moment for you, right? Your husband's inside the octagon. He's jumping up and down, celebrating, being a great husband, cheering his wife on there. And then there's another great moment, obviously, where your daughter kind of runs up to you. You're holding her as you're doing your octagon interview with Joe Rogan. So what a great moment for you. What a great family moment there for you and your family. Uh, Just talk about that moment there and what that was like to be able to have your family inside of the octagon and be able to hold your daughter while you did an interview with Joe Rogan. Yeah, for sure. That was such a great moment. You know, I, I was surprised. I didn't know they were going to come in there. So I'm like talking with Joe and then I look down and my daughter Moa's there and I'm like, oh, she's here, you know, so kind of like brought me back like, okay, you're, you're mommy now again, you know, like because in the moment I was Mackenzie the fighter, you know, and then I'm like, oh yeah, Mackenzie mom, you know, so it was cool just to um, see her like you know, it's cool to see how comfortable she is being there now, you know what I mean? She misses all the UFC family, you know, she gets it, she wants to say hi and hug everybody, like, I'm like, man, she's getting so used to this, you know, the camera and everything like that. So I'm really happy that I was able to have them by my side uh, to enjoy a hard, a hard fought win, you know, I was really, really focused for this camp, um, like the most focused I've ever been for a fight. So, I mean, I was, I spent a little bit of time with them you know I, I didn't get to spend a lot of time with them for the last eight weeks before the fight um just because of how focused i was but it was like man i'm just trying to trying to t- change a little bit you know i'm trying to be mackenzie the fighter focus on that um and i'm hoping that they'll understand you know in the future like hey we do this now for we can relax later and enjoy later you know what i mean so um yeah it was really really special for me to feel like, oh, okay, I can finally relax and be, you know, just not have to think about anything for a little bit. And of course, you guys had a lot to celebrate after a win there. Just talk about how you guys celebrated as a family afterwards. <laughs> yeah, we had a couple drinks, you know, we went to um, hotel, or we went back to the Fighters Hotel, and we started to have a couple drinks to celebrate, and we're like, you know what, let's stay here, let's stay down here in the, in the reception, you know, and like a lot of fans were coming in so it was kind of cool to you know like I said I was really focused so even during fight weeks there'd be some fans near the hotel and stuff and I wasn't really talking to too many just like a little bit from distance you know but I was just trying to stay focused and say like man I can't I can't guys I'm sorry you know and I'm like let's let's celebrate with the fans now you know like there he it was so good to be back in front of the fans I had like my last four four or five fights were the apex so I was really really enjoying just being back in front of a crowd and celebrating with them you know connect with me and me connect with the fans on the front line just Mackenzie the fighter but happy years having a couple of odds you know and just enjoying enjoying a good victory all right Mackenzie uh, another thing I got for you here is a question that I'm sure might annoy a lot of fighters but it's one that I'm going to have to ask and a lot of fans will be tuning into this question here uh, when do you want to return to the octagon obviously I know you literally just got done with the fight but do you have an ideal time frame of when you want to get back inside the back inside the octagon is there a certain opponent you want or at least a, a number I'm sure you're going to want somebody ranked in front of you being uh, in your position in the division no 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 it's totally like open right now. I'm just enjoying, I'm already back to training. You know, I started training again this week, like last week. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited to be not really injured and just back to training and see what opportunities will come. You know, I definitely want to fight someone ahead of me, uh, ahead in the ranks if I can. Um, or like, yeah, I'm trying none who's one behind me. I think I'm four and she's five, you know, so someone very close, but yeah, no, not really any any day, you know, or something like that. I'm just I'm gonna be ready, you know. I'm, I'm con- kind of continuing my training, obviously not not with the same intensity, you know. But I'm just getting better and trying to fix everything. Um, but yeah, we'll see. There's a lot of big fights in the strawweight division coming up, so maybe the loser of one of those fights, you know, because probably I don't know, maybe the winners will go and fight for the belt or something like that, you know. Um, and hopefully none of the girls get too beat up too in their fights, and then they'll want to. I definitely don't want to wait for too long, you know what I mean, like one year or something like that. But it's hard when you start getting closer to the top of the rankings, you know, you don't have that many options as, as often as when you're, you know, back, back to the rankings. So, um, just kind of enjoying the process right now. 
Yeah, a lot of great matchups in the strawweight division, and one of which that I want to ask you about uh, was something that wasn't official the last time we spoke. So the last time we spoke, uh, we did talk about the upcoming Rosanami Yunus Carlos Sparza fight. At that time, Yuani and Jay Chick Weili Zhang Part Two wasn't official. Well, now guess what? That fight is official. Yuani and Jay Chick Weili Zhang Part Two. Of course, those two ladies put on what has to be the greatest female fight of all time. They had an epic showdown. Back and forth war. Uh, a lot of people are excited for this fight. I know I'm personally excited for this fight. I'm sure you being just a fan of uh, of the sport, not only just that these women in your division have to be excited for it. So just talk about this upcoming fight here that's going down June 11th and, uh, you know, your thoughts on this matchup of this rematch between Yuani and Jay Chek and Wei Li Zhang. Man, that's going to be a good fight. I'm so excited for that fight. I hope I can, like, watch it live i think it's gonna be in singapore maybe i'll try and get like a trip out there just to watch it because that's gonna be such a cool fight um you know what i think joanna's gonna take it this time you know i think that it was such a close fight you know the last one but i think i think joanna's gonna take it i think she's gonna fix a couple mistakes um a, a little details you know and i think she's gonna come in with a little bit different strategy but I think it's going to be fight of the year again, one of the fights of the year. Um, but I think I'm going to go with Joanna this time. Yeah, definitely. Can't wait for it. It's going to be a great uh, great fight between those two ladies, especially after what they went through the first time. Can't wait to see the rematch. Uh, Mackenzie, it's always great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the time here today. Uh, one last thing now before you roll out. Uh, social media management sponsors anybody got to give a shout out to and uh, actually speaking of social media too congratulations uh, i believe earlier this week what you got your one million follower mark there on instagram so that's great in itself so congratulations on that so anyway yeah take it away floor is yours yeah no thank you guys so much thanks all the fans you know wouldn't be any none of this would be possible without the fans you know they're the ones that you know watch us they're the ones that support us so thank you so much for my fans you can go to Mackenzie turn um on instagram on twitter facebook and yeah that's it just thank you everyone and thank you for the time always good to talk to you all right, Mackenzie, thanks again so much for all the time. Really appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you guys out there watching today's interview. If you liked it, please go to the bottom, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And MyMMANews.com, great content comes out there across all levels of mixed martial arts from the regional scene to all the great professional organizations as well. So make sure you guys are going there to get all of our great content that we have. So uh, yeah, thanks again so much for watching guys and uh, please go to our social media pages as well. Uh, give us a like and a follow on that as well. We'll see you later everybody.